Well, hello, I made it. I didn't think I was gonna be able to get on here with you. My purse did not show up that I planned to work on with you, but I'm gonna go and do the leather belts like we talked about earlier today. If you caught my live, I was sharing with you some things that you can do with your wardrobe to update maybe some of your old belts or handbags or what have you using a few simple tricks of the trade, one known as barge cement. I'm gonna show you how to do that right here. I'll set this so you can see it. It's B-A-R-G-E barge cement and say hello if you're just coming on to this live and if you are new to our page also comment right here below i want to send you a link and let you in on how to get yourself some of the amazing all-in-one paint i would love to have you into our group as well and comment here and i'll send you that link to get your free sample as well as joining in our fantastic group of over 200,000 users of this amazing paint product so i have my camera tilted down so you can see what I'm doing. If you missed my life earlier today, if this is in your way, take your finger and slide those comments on your smartphone right to the right. You'll be able to see what I'm working on. This is an old belt and this is a crocodile imprinted piece of uh, patent leather, they call it. But this is certainly not leather. This is a bonded material, much like what you see sofas made out of. As you can see where it's been worn in the back, it's beginning to do a beautiful thing called delaminate. You see that, how that's coming apart? So this belt is not uh, a quality product, let's say, but I'm gonna give it a nice new little life. I'm going to paint this belt black because I no longer wear a white belt, but what I'm really after here is this belt buckle. And this is an old style guest belt. I'm sure you guys have seen and maybe even worn one like this, but this is not me any longer, but I'm gonna make something really cute out of this and I'm gonna do it using leather and the paint. So first thing I'm gonna do is start this leather process simply because I want you to see how to do it and how to use the barge cement and then I'm going to paint this as this is beginning to dry so we can get through the whole project. We're going to do two different things to this. First off, on top of this metal, I'm going to go ahead and take the lid off the barge cement. This stuff is pretty smelly. It's like a rubber cement on steroids. This is a glue. You don't want to leave the lid off any extended time using a thin coat of this glue. You're going to brush that right on top of this metal or anywhere you're trying to stick something. And I'll share the link to Barge Cement if you're interested. I bought this on eBay of all places. Now, I have that on. So what's going to happen now is I'm going to cut a piece of the leather to go on top of this. And I have to brush on a coat onto that suede leather. And I'm going to turn it so the suede side is out. Should have done this first. And I'll do it anyway. I'm actually going to line the back of this. And what I mean by that is once I create this over uh, the edge area, I'm going to flip it over and wrap it again on the back side so I have a neat and finished piece all the way around. So I'm going to use a metallic marker. And if those comments are in your way, just flip it over. And I uh, can't draw all the way around it, but again, enough just to see the shape here, giving myself some ease and some selvage along the way. So I'm not gonna cut up tight to that line using some big, nice scissors. And because this is a very low ounce leather, meaning it's not a thick piece of leather, this is under a one ounce piece of leather. It's very thin, very pliable and lightweight. So I'm gonna use the suede side and I'm gonna also use a back side of this in the leather. So I'm gonna cut two of these. Hang on, let me lay this out here a little better. And I don't want to get the copper on the next piece because I'm gonna actually use the suede side. So ask questions if you're new to our page, if you'd like to get yourself some of the all-in-one paint. I'm gonna show you how to use all-in-one paint in just a minute. I'm gonna be painting the actual belt and I also have another beautiful belt that is all leather. And I'm gonna demonstrate painting that burgundy kind of a cordovan color leather. I'm gonna paint this guy all black and show you how quickly you can update even, even leather boots, accessories, and so on that you have, including your furniture. You probably already know about the furniture, but sometimes people don't think about what they can actually do to their wardrobe. You can use this in so many different ways, and uh, don't forget about those great things that you paid a lot of money for, designer things, what have you, you know? You carry a bag for so long, it looks weather-worn and beat up. If you saw me even use Relove on the beautiful handbag that Tanya Tucker gave me, um, that is my bag I carry every single day, and I adore that bag. But it was very vivid. It was kind of a, a tooled bag. I wish I had it sitting here and show it to you, but it was a tooled leather handbag, and it was a very expensive bag that she had never carried. It was brand new, and she also had the shoulder strap bag, and she gave both of those to me, and it was too orangey for me. It just when I walked in the room, it felt like it was the first thing you saw. She'd bought it in Italy, and 
uh, really, really a gorgeous leather, and it just smelled up the vehicle when it was in my car. So uh, I used Relove on it, and I toned it down and brought that leather back down to a warm golden amber brown, and then all of that tooling just popped up. It's just so beautiful. I may just happen to have to go in there and get that. All right, so I already got this coat on. Now, as this is setting up, I already brushed on the barge cement onto this, like I told you. We're gonna cover this front side first. So because I want the suede side up on this, I'm gonna brush the barge cement on the back side, on the actual leather side, the finished side of this piece. Only a sheer coat is all I need to do. You notice I cut two. I'm also going to do what I said on the back and I'm gonna line this piece. And give it a finished look. So I'm gonna brush this edge to edge, making sure I cover every single inch of this little piece right up to the corners and the edge. I used to use this product every day. If you have a leather garment, a leather skirt, whatever you may have, it's been hemmed with this product. You don't sew a hem in leather and have a big line around, a seam line around. But what you do to leather is you hem it with glue. And this is what's been used uh, in the industry. This is what they run through barge cements, what they use in all the glue machines, and also in any shoe manufacturing process. They use barge cement, so it's a professional product, and it's quite smelly, I might add. So I'm gonna lay both of these pieces here, and you will notice that the shine is already starting around the edges because I put on a very thin coat, almost like using rubber cement when you're a kid in elementary school. Uh, this bonds to itself, so it doesn't stick just onto something. So you have to make, it's called a two-part bond. Bonds to only itself, whatever you brushed it on. So I'm gonna let that set up in just a minute. We're gonna come back to this after we get a good bond or after we get it starting to dry and put those two together. And I'm gonna watch it pretty carefully here. I'm just gonna start right into this part on the other belt because I'm gonna keep some of you guys with me here. If you're new to our page, comment below and say hi that you're new and I'm gonna send you the link to get yourself one of these guys. One of this eight ounce sample will paint something the size of your front door. It will paint your accessories. It will paint your shoes and boots. It will do about anything, literally. Using a little cheap brush because I've got a lot of nooks and crannies to get in here. I already wiped this down with a glosser because I am certain that this had on it some sort of a wax. You don't want that to inhibit the bond of your paint. So as you can see, one coat just starting to brush on here is already covering over this red. And this is an incredible paint. It's not gonna look like we painted it with a brush in just a moment. If the comments are in your way, just brush them over with your finger. This little concho that's on the front of this belt <clears throat> has been put on with a brad. So I can get my brush eased under there. And so why I chose this brush, it's a nice little stiff bristle brush. It's gonna let me paint right around all that detail and trim this out because again, I don't wanna wear this thing if it looks like it's been painted. I might have to suck in to get this thing on. I haven't had this on in so long because I don't wear this red leather any longer. I don't have any boots or anything that color, nor do I have any bags that color. Do y'all remember? Uh, oh, this was the most hilarious thing that I have ever heard. I have to tell you this story because it made me think of it. Do you remember, and in Kentucky, this was extremely famous. People called it Agner, and it was this color. It was this color of a red, or a little darker, maybe a little more cord of them, and it was so popular up here in Kentucky. If you guys are from Kentucky, and I'm sure it was popular everywhere else, it was a famous designer, okay? And I heard it all my days. I even sold the stuff in my store at one time, even though we weren't a dealer. We were selling them refurbished or something. Don't remember how we were getting them, we had a huge clientele coming from Kentucky to buy it from us too. And uh, kind of odd that it got popular in Kentucky. Nevertheless, I didn't live in Kentucky then, I lived in Tennessee. I'll tell you this as I'm painting over this color that is definitely Agner. So one day I just happened to be, now this has not been that long ago, watching QVC of all things. I was just going through channels, you know how you just come across something and I see a lady standing there, beautiful little small petite woman standing there and she's talking about shoes, bags, whatever it is she's selling there as they normally are selling a handbag of some sort or whatever. And this lady calls out the name of the brand that she is promoting. And she says the word Etne Anye. And I look at the screen and I thought, well, that's Agner. All those years I heard it called Agner. That's a Southern uh, pronunciation of the correct way to say it is Etne Anye. <laughs> anyway, thought y'all might get a kick out of that. Did you know it was called Etne Anye or do you call it Agner? <laughs> so I never did understand what the E-I-T-N-E-N-E, -E -E, whatever, but that was the beautiful word called Etne, 
at Naonya. Anyway, I haven't got, forgotten that. <laughs> so, all right, so there is going on the black. As you can see, the transformation has already taken place. Now, I'm gonna paint the back of this belt too. As I said earlier today, it is a woven, and because it is braided like this, it's gonna always kind of tend to wanna show underneath there. And I'm just gonna take this stiff brush and push in there as, as good as I can. And I'll flip it over as it dries and paint the back side. So that way I don't have to worry that it flips or turns or moves or whatever. Kind of like uh, painting wicker, you know, you've got to work something down in there. If you have questions, ask away right here, and I want to uh, answer those for you and also get yourself a sample of this amazing product. And I want you to see this as it begins to dry. One coat is going to probably cover, but always do too. Never hurts just to go back over it one more time. That way if you missed a spot or you've got highs and lows in that, and this is going to take probably a half of an ounce to paint this. So. The paint goes an extremely long way. So that's one thing to remember when you see that little eight ounce size or we tell you that a quart will cover 140 square feet. Many people ask, how many gallons does it take to paint my kitchen? Well, it's gonna take a couple of quarts most likely to paint your kitchen, it depends on how big it is. You can also visit our URL website, whatever you wanna call it, at allinonepaint.com forward slash get started push that, type that right into your toolbar. Again, allinonepaint.com forward slash get started. That will take you right there to a landing page that will show you a video and also give you all of the tools that you need to get started as well as how much that you need to order of paint based on the project you're working on. So that's the best place to go right now. If you're interested in a sample, just say something here. This paint paints leather, vinyl. It also paints smooth fabrics. If you saw our post today, painting a beautiful, someone painted their sofa, beautiful Ibiza. It was a cotton sofa. So just keep in mind if you're painting fabrics, test them beforehand, leathers and vinyls. I'm certain you're gonna love it, always. So here we are this far. So here's the before kind of and the after. So here is the black belt. Here it is this red. And as you can see, the transformation is already starting. So I'm gonna jump right over here quickly and put these two pieces together using the barge cement because they are already, as you can see, all the real shine, shiny shine is gone and it is here as well. So it looks kind of murky when it begins to dry. So because I'm using the suede side, I'm gonna be real careful where I position this and not put any pressure on it. And just kind of get it where I wanna go and lay it down. Then I'm gonna take my hand and rub it you can also use a mallet, and if you were working on something larger, this is stuck, and I'm gonna give you an example of that. It's gonna peel, you can see that right there. See how it looks like chewing gum coming up? This stuff hardens, amazing. So what I'm gonna do is turn all this over. There's no glue on the back now. I'm gonna go ahead now and put a little rim of glue here on the inside, trim this up, and turn it over. Then I'll do what's called line. I'm gonna cut another piece smaller that I already have here and lay on the interior and glue it on and really neaten it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim this back right now. Give myself just a margin to roll over there. You can make earrings, you can just make anything. You can wrap a piece of cardboard or anything with leather in this same technique using barge cement and make very lightweight earrings and all sorts of costume jewelry you can make using this same technique and uh, paint the leather any color. You're gonna see me do that whenever I start working on this handbag. I have all those things here, all but the handbag. I'll try to do that as soon as it gets here. It's in the mail, I do know that. So everything with the mail, as you know, is so slow right now. It's been shipped for probably a week and a half. It still hasn't shown up here. Okay, so there it is, all trimmed out. Here's what this suede buckle is gonna look like once I get done. It's already bonded on there really, really well. Well, now I'm going to do, like I said, I'm gonna paint this interior so I've got a nice looking back. You always want the back to look as good as the front. So now I'm gonna go in here and just go right around the little selvage edge of the metal. And then I'm gonna roll that up when it tacks up. Roll it right up there and turn the selvage under. And then move to the next step. So I have to turn this belt underneath here. All right, so that, that got that. Now I'll leave it laying there for a moment. Now this guy is going to be the interior of that. I'm gonna go ahead and trim it up see if I can get it to looking about the size we need it to be. Best to have laid these out and drawn them off and got them all sized up before you start, unlike what I'm doing here. I'm kind of eyeballing this just a little bit. 
say hi if you're new to our page. And I believe I got that pretty close. If not, I will go back and this is gonna be the interior liner of this belt. Okay, jump back to this piece because this one's looking so good. Can you see that? All right, so I'm gonna finish right here. Okay, they're all done. So I enjoy doing these things so much and I hope that this is inspiring to you to get in there and go through your old shoes and old styles of things that you think you can't get any more wear out of and you really aren't interested in them any longer. Get them out, pull them out, paint them up, give them to somebody that might enjoy them. This is a great time to be doing those things. And this probably would cost you 10 cents worth of paint and I'm gonna give you a sample if you wanna try it. So I think uh, you can't lose. The only thing you gotta do is Go up here and claim your sample. And I'm gonna post the link to the sample here, if you're seeing this later, right in the top of this post. So you don't have to worry about someone coming back and commenting and sending you the link later. I'll send it or put it up there permanently in the post after it goes live. All right, we get down here on the solid part of the belt. And this product comes in 30 colors. And I'm gonna show you some absolute gorgeous colors in my box over here that I have for the handbag project. I can't wait to share those with you in just a moment. So stay with me, please, if this is fun to you. I love doing these projects at home and I've really enjoyed it and I've missed that with you all. I had a little surgery, so I was a little bit out of commission for a bit and uh, I'm back and feeling much better. And now I can get back started on some of my projects with you here, just to keep you busy during all these old times. The blues can set in and people can get downtrodden and all that. Perfect thing to do is keep those hands moving, keep your mind occupied, and just realize that there is a bright day ahead. It's just all about how you wanna perceive that day. You know, get up and embrace the day and God gave us and uh, try to find the best in it rather than the worst, because it could be worse. Believe me, it could be a lot worse. We faced a lot in this country and uh, who knows what's to come. So let's embrace and enjoy what we have here today and uh, just pray for the betterment. Okay, so. Just a little bit more to go. You see how quick I've got this. I already gave, already gave it a totally new look. I'm gonna share that color with you just one more time so you can see it before you see it disappear. That's how red it was in one coat. Look as it's drying, how beautiful, you see that? Does that look painted to you? One coat, one coat. Now I am gonna do another just to be absolutely sure that it looks this great. I can't remember where I bought this belt. This is one of those, you ever had something that you paid a lot of money for and you didn't wear it that much like you thought you would, but you just couldn't get rid of it. This was one of those. It fell in that category in my closet. I don't even think it fits me anymore, but I've got some of those jeans that don't fit me anymore either that I won't get rid of because I don't, I don't even, they're not even style, but I keep thinking, I paid too much for those. I'm gonna squeeze in them one day. That's where this belt falls in my life. It's one of those I thought, you know, if I could wear that sucker, I would. I probably wouldn't, I've got a million belts. But I have that mindset anyway. Rather that be the case. But now that it's black, more chance that I will wear it because I would wear a black belt, probably not the red belt. Every time I put it on, I think it just draws too much attention to my waist, which is not a tiny little waist anymore. So. Okay, working it right down in there using this old stiff brush, just a piece of junk brush, which anything you have, don't let tools on this project keep you from painting something because this is not a quality brush that I'm using. It's just a very inexpensive brush. Something you need in your arsenal of, uh, of things if you're gonna paint around your home is get yourself a variety of brushes. Get some sable hair brushes when you wanna do fine detail work and you wanna trim around handles on something or whatever without taking them off. Get yourself some pointed, nice, fine sable brush hair that's got natural sable hair. Then get something like this. This is just a, this is a true nylon bristle brush that's probably a 10 cent brush. And I've kept it that long. Isn't that great? I've still held on to this thing and I'm glad I did because it made the perfect brush for tonight. I find all these things in my drawers where I'll wash them out and go, oh, well, I'll keep that. I might need it for something. And here I am using it, so. I tell y'all how frugal I am. I'm pretty frugal. And I don't even realize it sometimes until something like that. <laughs> I go, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty frugal. Glad I am. It's paid off uh, well for me to be frugal in my life. 
my dad used to say the best thing. He'd say, you throw more out. This is when I was young. He said, throw more out the back door than you can bring in the front because I was the one who cleaned up all these buildings and stuff they had full of stuff. So that was his way of telling me I was wasteful. And he was probably pretty right then. I, it wasn't my money I was throwing out, it was his. So it was easy for me to get rid of it. But nowadays I've become more like my parents. I'm a little more saving. And uh, they would laugh at me. <clears throat> Through the years I'd go down to their house and I'd say, do you all have X? And my dad would say, yeah, I sure did until you threw it out. Uh, sure did have one of those. So then that was his big, uh, I told you so moment, you know. Hey, just cause I, you don't think you need it. You might need it someday. Sure enough, I'd need it. And he'd just get to rub that in, or mother would too, to say, yep, I knew you'd come calling for that one day. Here you are. Okay, so I've already got this on. I wasn't quite ready for a step, I thought. So I've already got this little edge here with the glue on it, and this is already tacked up. I'm just gonna turn that over. So you see what I'm doing there? Just tightening that up. Taking my finger and easing that all the way around this little piece. Now, this will be an appropriate time to bring out a little rubber mallet. And don't have one here handy sure I had one somewhere. Turn that right under, even over here where the buckle's at, and roll that neatly with your finger right into that glue, and it is, this is not like any glue you've ever used. This is a awesome product that is, again, designed for the shoe industry. So look how neat and pretty that buckle is. See how that, there's no little edges that pop up or anything. It's just as neat as it can be and hard. I think I'm gonna find a piece of jewelry, like I said earlier today, and find something here, like an old earring, just whatever I have, a cabochon, something here. You could put anything there, and you could make this any color too. And you could use leather, you could paint the leather here, you could make this any color in the rainbow. But again, I chose black because I think it's something I would truly wear. And uh, at my age, I'm a little bit more comfortable with black belts and so on. So, all right, got that done. So now let's apply the glue on the very back. And I'm using, again, barge cement, and I'm using very little, there's hardly any on this brush. I'm gonna put on my liner, what I call my liner, and I'm gonna go right up to the edge here, careful not to get it onto the face of the piece. And you're gonna work off the back of this. There is a peg here that helps you, uh, or that actually holds the belt closed. I'm gonna go right around that little guy and I'm gonna split my piece so it can go over it in just a minute. I'll show you how to do that too. This piece won't, this belt piece won't come off this thing, so I'm just having to deal with it. All right, so I've got that. Let me lay it down. And now on the liner, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this suede side, so, or on the leather side, I'm gonna put the glue on the suede. I want it to be a little more rigid on the back, up against your clothes. Suede sometimes wants to sweat maybe discolor or something, so the leather is a little more durable. This stuff has a smell that is uh, pretty toxic, actually, but there's something about it I like. <laughs> it's kind of like smelling uh, uh, gasoline sometimes. You know, you don't want to breathe it, but then again, something about the smell, I don't know. I don't hate it. I kind of like it. That's how this stuff smells. All right, so I'm going to go ahead now and paint the this belt, this piece, okay? So this crocodile looking piece is nothing but pure vinyl. Let me get a coat on it. And because this is shiny, I wiped it down again with a deglosser. This is not going to paint the same as the leather. It's not as porous. Very slick, very shiny. Very plasticky, I will say, the best way to say it. Now this would benefit from stippling. So in lieu of stippling, I'm gonna do two coats. I don't wanna dirty up everything I've got here. Can you see? Swipe the comments off on your own phone, off to the right, and get rid of those. I'm also going to do the edges here and black the edges. This is something else too. I don't know if you've ever used a product called Shoe or Sole and Heel, I believe is what it's called. Again, another cobbler, something shoe repair folks use all the time, but you can use the Iron Gate color to black soles on all of your shoes, dress shoes, whatever it is. You can use this to go around the soles and the edges to make them back beautiful black again. I've done it often. <laughs> I have done it on my own shoes. I wear black boots in the winter. 
almost daily, actually, some sort of a black boot, and they just take a beating. Even if they're fairly new, they look bad quick because I'm around paint, walking out in the warehouse. I get stuff on them. I just black them out with this. Makes them look sharp again. So the edge, this little edge here, because it's snow white, I'm gonna go down that edge. Can you see that? And just go take my brush and hit right down that edge to camouflage that white. Do all that in just a minute. I'll roll it up and do it in just a minute. But I'm gonna get the whole thing black here. Get that coat on so I can maybe get two coats. I'd also suggest wearing some gloves. I didn't do that tonight. Didn't have any or think about it. Doing a lot of touching here. Do you all like doing clothes and that kind of projects? By the way, I saw something I meant to share tonight. A lady who did her golf cart seat over in our group in polo. Amazing. And I haven't had a chance to share it yet, but I will be sharing it tomorrow on our Instagram page probably. I may even try to do it tonight. Don't want to do it too late. It is phenomenal. It looks like um, the seats were a normal tan color and they had some mold on them and been out in the weather and exposed and she did that the cart was white and she did the seat navy and the beautiful polo color it is it's just gorgeous it's just gorgeous she wouldn't believe it so here is the belt as it's beginning to be almost dry you can see the smooth areas there so what a transformation and it went from if you're just joining us it went from red to black so let's keep on going and uh I'll let that one dry just a minute and I'll put on some more on this. So let's go ahead and paint the actual suede of the back of this belt and see if we can get it to look great too and kick all the edges. My husband just walked in the door here. He's been out riding around on his new little four-wheeler. He's become a country boy all of a sudden. <laughs> I like that look. I don't know that he liked that comment. Did you become a country boy? <laughs> all right, so, so we're just going right on down here and making all this look great. Now because this is a suede on the back, it'll stiffen just a little, but nothing major. And the suede's almost like a velvet. It has a lot of texture to it, so. <laughs> it's the barge cement. He's noticing the smell here of this glue. <coughs> It is a little loud. It's making me choke up a little bit. I'll have you scared to use it, guys. Our paint has zero smell, by the way. You don't smell it at all. But this glue does. Work in a little open area if, it, if you think it's gonna be affecting you. And now let me push all this down here. Take me just a moment to get through this again. You'll never be the wiser that this belt started off its life red. Just like you can paint your recliners, your anything you have that's leather or vinyl. I have an Ekernus chair that uh, Craig has up in his bedroom, actually, upstairs that he goes in to sit and read and so on and so on. And uh, it started off as a green, a dark hunter green. And I haven't decorated with green in a long, long time. If you're familiar with Ekernes, it was a chair and an ottoman, and they're a uh, Scandinavian recliner, and they're really a pretty chair. They're just neat and have a wooden base, and I painted that. I did a live on that, actually. It's here pinned on our page somewhere in the videos if you want to watch that. And that chair has been uh, painted in truffle, I believe, and it looks incredible. Looks like it did brand new. Looks like it... Uh, is off the showroom floor. There's not a nick or a scratch in it, and I know he sits in it probably nightly, actually. People ask, does this wear off? Does this come off on your clothes? And I sh I'm sure when I read back through the comments here, I'm gonna see a lot of that. Is this gonna get on your clothes? It does not, it's permanent. And uh, if you've used the paint, you'll already know. It likes to bond to skin, so be careful. When you get it on you, be sure to go to the sink as quickly as you can. Just like me, I'm gonna have to go get this off of me in just a moment. When I leave you guys here, the deglosser, our surface prep, will uh, clean your hands up pretty good. It does soften the paint. So you can use that if you need to. So look at that. So let me show you where we're at in the project. I just caught a glimpse of this piece of the belt. Look how pretty that is already. Can you tell that's been brushed on? You saw me, that's one coat right there. One coat, can you see that? 
just so you see the beautiful leather coming through. No brush marks. That's when I tell you it's self-leveling. That's what I'm meaning. That you can make it look incredible. There is no other paint um, like this product. There's a lot of paints out there, but none quite like this product. We've worked on this product for seven, six years. We've worked on this product and uh, been doing a whole lot of refining and so on to get it where it is today. And it is pretty amazing, I have to say. All right, about ready to put the cover on the back of the belt. Be done with this one. Just a little bit more to go here. And then I'm gonna show you the colors that I have for the uh, handbag project and show you a little bit about that as we wrap it up here. And uh, we'll try to do that tomorrow if the bag comes. And if I get it tomorrow morning, I'll do a live with you here tomorrow morning. So follow us on our page to get notifications of the live. So what I'm gonna be doing, I'll just tell you about that because that'll be the easiest I can do here while I'm painting. I have purchased a old coach handbag and it's the shape I was really after. And I think it was $10, $10 on eBay. And it, uh, it's an old kidney shape, hobo bag, as you want, want to call it. And it is white, but it was very dirty, very yellowed, you know, maybe been worn, carried a lot, whatever. And I'm going to paint it using cashmere to make it back bright white after I clean it up. And then I'm going to take the leather pieces that I have. I have a white piece as well as this black piece that you saw me use earlier. I'm gonna cut those into some strips and I'm gonna use our paint and cut and paint these pieces of leather in all kinds of fun and summer colors. And then I'm going to make a long strip that's finished on the sides on each side. In other words, I'm going to use the barge cement and I'm going to bend it over, make a nice long pretty strip, and I'm going to tie an actual knot in, in this piece of leather, long skinny piece of leather. I'm going to cut holes in certain places on the handbag, just a nice little hole. I'm going to run the back two tails of that inside the bag and I'm going to glue those in place. So on the outside of this kidney shaped bag will be all these fun colored summer colored knots and it's gonna be really cute. And then I'm gonna create a long, big, pretty leather tassel about this long out of the white leather to hang from the handle of the bag. Just something fun and cute that you can use as a neat way to dress up a simple white handbag. Something you're tired of, we're gonna get into the back of that handbag by opening up the seam in the interior of the lining. We're gonna split the lining in there in the seam, open it up so we can access it easily, then go back in there and hand stitch and close that. And uh, that way, that's how we're gonna get in the back of that bag. All right, so here we go. Um, this is the first coat of paint going on our black belt here now. Let me lay it over and I'm gonna put the liner on just so I can show you that. Put my lid back on my paint. Now this little guy is sticky, can you hear that? And this is also sticky, it's ready. So I'm gonna put this on, and I'm gonna watch where I place it, and it's just gonna cover right over the edge of that interior flap, and I'm gonna to have to make some cuts in this. See that post there? I'm just gonna go right in there, right where it lines up, and just make a tiny slit in the leather to open it enough just to get this to lay over it. See that? I just made a little split in there. I'm just gonna lay it right around it. It's going to stick. <laughs> It'll need to stick good. So there you go. So I got it to lay around it. Now it's all nice and cleaned up and I'll just push this in place. I've got some other little pegs here. I might have to trim around those two. Maybe not. All right, there you go. Now this thing's gonna have to have a little slit too with the buckle where the arm is holding on the belt strap, same thing, just open it up. So there you go. So I made belts for years, and I, you know what I made belts out of? You'll kind of flip when you know this. I didn't have an actual belt that I started with. I used, you can even use heavy cardboard and create your belt shape and once you have that, 
belt shape. You then use the barge cement on the front and the back, just like we did here. And then that gives it some rigid uh, ability then to be st strong enough to make a shape. I made all kinds of beautiful belts. You can look back through Tanya Tucker's photos. Louise Mandrell, I made all of her uh, DI wardrobe that she wore in Desert Inn when she had a permanent uh, gig out there that she was doing. I made all sorts of things for her that were belts and uh, you name it. But Tanya loved belts and still does to this day. I don't know how many she wears as much as she used to. Not as much, but she definitely wore a lot of belts and many that I made too. Handbags. I made handbags for her too. And uh, that knot handbag that I'm going to do here with you, I actually even made the handbag itself at one point. And I think she ended up with one of those. I believe I made her one in turquoise with a similar idea. She loves turquoise, and I do too. I'm going to roll this up so I can paint these edges easier, okay? So you don't have to hold it so strange, but doing that, that way you can just come right here and touch it all at once. That's going to get in there and paint all that nice and consistent. And let all that dry well, and then we'll put on a second coat on all the whole belt once we get it done here. But yes, conchos and all those things, even leather, you can uh, cut up leather and do different m motifs and designs just using all leather, on leather. Beads, turquoise, chunks, you name it. Take your jewelry apart and create them, some things. Lots of fun stuff you can do. And this barge cement sure does make it easy to get creative <clears throat> using something like leather. You know, I mean, there's all kinds of great glues out there, but nothing compares to this. I've tried them all through the years. Okay, so there's that, looking pretty good. if I can handle it now. So there's one coat on the belt. So we went from a white belt with a silver metallic buckle to this. It's still soaking wet. So there you go. There you see it. What do you think? You like it? So if I find something pretty to put here, I'll show you that as it all dries up and I get another coat on this thing later. And I'm gonna show you another couple of projects that I'm working on because I'm gonna share them with you as I do them. I have some island lights above this here that I have never been a fan of. They're not ugly, but they are, I'm gonna call them Victorian just a bit. They just don't do a thing for me. Pick this up and show them to you. See that light to me? It's not ugly, there's three right there in a row, all three of those. And hey, they probably suit this room, but I think they date this room. So I ordered something and I'm gonna change it up. Now, these look chintzy. And they were not expensive, they were cheap. So they should look chintzy, and they do. Uh, but I wanted to have just a little bit more of a more modern feeling, not to take away from all of this Frenchy country thing going on here, but these lights are gold and black. But this little copper here is what I was after, and this, but this is really a hard black. So what I'm gonna paint these is, I'm gonna paint them in Corinthian, which is a little bit more old rub bronze, which is all the trim here. And then I'm going to paint this gold here that's up, that's actually holding the bulb itself. And then the inside of this thing, copper. I'm going to paint this inside, this whole light here to match this band that's on it after I do the Corinthian on this. So I will show you those. I'm going to rehang these and take those down and put up these cheap lights. And I may even use the Edison bulb in this. Don't know. Might, might not. I'm not real sure about that. You know, Edison bulbs put off a yellow amber glow in your room. I don't know that I'm not gonna like it or dislike it. I'm gonna try it. And uh, I think it would look good in this. I'm just not sure I'm after that light in here. I like to be in here where I've got good bright light. I'm not sure I need that golden light going on. I have one in my office and I'm not a fan of it. Uh, all right, so let me walk back through here what I got done. So I got both sides of this guy done now. So both sides now have a beautiful black bell. What do you think? You saw how long it took. And uh, here it is on the end so you can see. I may put on another coat, but you can see the finish on the leather. What do you think about that? You saw the cheap brush I used. Got a good fingernail going there, a little manicure, a little black tips got going. Got that. And uh, 
I'll let this one dry just a little bit longer. I'm gonna show you some of the fun colors. I'm gonna paint those leather knots. And here's my white leather hide that I have, and I'm gonna make the tassel out of for the handbag. And then it's also the piece I'm going to cut up. I'm gonna use some of the black too, because I've got dark colors like the beautiful Color Club color that we just had. This is this month's Color Club August. This gorgeous, gorgeous purple. That'll be one of my knots. I got a lot of the Color Club colors here because they're fun colors. Here was a couple months back in the Color Club. And uh, here is our, or here's French Toile. I'm gonna use that one. I'm gonna also use um, Monarchy. I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna use Naples, and I'm also going to use the beautiful Capri. I'm gonna do a lot of knots. Here's the color of the bag, cashmere, I'll do that. And uh, what do we got here? This is a moth, I'm gonna use that. So I'm gonna have several colors of turquoise going. And here's Polo, I'll do one of those. And I'm also gonna be using the pretty Color Club color, that coral that we did. This was the first sample of that one. Here's my Naples, sorry, these are covered in paint. My kit is a mess as usual. And then of course the beautiful pink. So all of those, each of those will be a knot. I'll assign each of those a spot and we'll kind of randomly place them and uh, cut up some pieces of this, paint it, cut it into a strip and then make a nice piece of finished edge to tie that pretty knot. Gotta come up with a way, forgot how I tied the knot before. It wasn't just a knot. I believe I did a loop and pulled it back through. So it almost made like a monkey uh, what do you call that? Monkey fist, maybe? I can't remember. Y'all remember when people used to call those nice rounded knots? I'm going to play with that and see if I can come up with a great knot that makes more of a round knot versus just a kind of an ugly knot. I don't know what you call it, but I believe it's a monkey fist if I'm not mistaken. All right, so uh, one more on here. Let me share the name of this product again with you just because somebody said I moved it too fast and she couldn't see it. it was making her dizzy last time. So I'm going to show it to you real straight right there. And because it's backwards, just look for barge cement, just like a barge that floats on the water, barge cement. And I can share that link with you where I bought it on eBay. Uh, there was a lot of sellers on eBay and you can probably get it in some sort of, uh, don't think you can get it at Home Depot or Lowe's. It's certainly not a product that they would be selling. Amazon, I am sure, has it daily. So it uh, depends on where you shop, where you wanna pick it up at. So uh, what else did I wanna share with you? I just gotta do some stuff. Oh my goodness, I knew there was something I had to say that out on my back porch, since I haven't seen you guys in some time here at home, uh, you know, I told you a while back that I had that porch being closed in. Well, all through the, the whole virus ordeal, it's uh, slowly going, slow, slow, slim, slow, very slow. <laughs> anyway, it, uh, it is getting there now. They've got it all torn out and they're supposed to be here this week to close it in, but I have a little surprise for you out there and uh, something that I'm going to be sharing with you. And also, there's a two parts to this. I have, if you saw these bed swings, it's like a twin size mattress swing, a big one, and beautiful pillows on them, and it's hung by like a one inch size rope, big sisal rope. And I had a guy locally make me one of those, and he's such a great guy, and met him, and he came down to my business. He happened to live nearby, and I found him because of a hashtag, believe it or not and called him up and I said, hey, can you build one of these? He said, sure I can. So he came over, he's a young guy, he's very energetic. And I said, hey, you should start a business doing this. It's a great market. So he, guess what, he is. And I've been helping him as much as I possibly can. And he's going to create a DIY kit to make yourself one of these swings. He's starting first with a chair and he's making it smaller because that way uh, he can try this before he gets in too far and so on. So you're going to see a kit that he's putting together. And this guy is a genius, let me say. And he's got it all ready to go. I'm going to show you the swing that he made for me. And I'm going to paint it. And Jeremy is going to show you the swing that he can sell you as a kit. And you can put it together. He has everything inside the box. It'll also have all the screws, all everything drilled out. All you have to do is follow the simple directions and a video that he's going to provide you to put it together. So I'm excited to see that. And I hope that he can come out here with me and paint his while I'm painting mine. I'm painting mine Iron Gate. And I'll be sharing that project with you very soon. And you'll be seeing it. And I'm going to be finishing mine and putting the cushions on it before I turn off the camera. Because I'm going to get it all done while you watch. And uh, he'll have his on the ground. I think he's going to be putting his together to show you how easy this kit is to put together. These things are thousands of dollars. And uh, 
It hurt me to think I'd have something that expensive out in the weather. Even though it's a covered porch, it'd still be getting wet. So I just couldn't justify spending that on this. And I think maybe a lot of you are like me. Uh, it was about the principle of it. And uh, rather than spending that kind of money on it and worrying about it, I would be. I'd be out there covering it up with a sheet or a plastic bag or, you know, if the rain came in, I'd be fretting about that. So I thought, you know, if uh, it's reasonable priced, I can understand. I can handle a little water getting on it, but not if I paid that much for it, heaven forbid. So he made me a great one, a beautiful swing, and I can't wait to install it and paint it with you and then show you that gorgeous kit that he's put together that's going to be a great savings and a good way to get yourself one of these beautiful swings for your own back porch. And uh, it's not a huge one, so it can fit most people's porch, I do believe. So it'll also hang by the big ropes, and it goes through the arm with a big fat knot, so it looks like something you'd see in Savannah or something like that. So can't wait to share that with you. So that's coming up very soon. He delivered the swing to me today and he's working on refining his kit and getting a box made so he can ship it to you nationwide. All right, guys, I'm going to get off of here and I'll look to see you sometime, hopefully when my bag gets here and uh, we'll put this bag project together and then I'll try to go out here and squeeze in this belt and see if I can get it on. <laughs> so wish me luck. And I won't have that ice cream tonight like I was planning to do. And uh, maybe I can sport this belt around here and just show you. If not, I'll hold it up. Let you see how it looks, okay? Y'all have a great evening. I'll see you later. Bye.